Welcome back. Today we're discussing the heating properties of kitty litter and sand over there. I've got them warming up on the stove. Now I've done a few experiments and measured the outcome and I have the specific heat for those items and compared to water. I kind of want to bust the myth of whether we should be using kitty litter as a thermal heat sink or whether it's even cost effective to be doing so when compared to sand and when it's compared to water. As you can see, my son has started a fire about 10 minutes ago. He came out here and we mixed all this food together. We've got some of our kale, some of our eggs, and some of our Swiss shards, some of our perpetual shard spinaches, some leeks, and just some all natural food. Some very good, healthy, wholesome breakfast for us out in the greenhouse here. So now, if all of that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel because that's pretty much all we do here on the homestead. So let's get into today's video. Yeah. Look what I found out there. I found this huge piece of ice and I'm gonna smash it. <laughs> First of all, we've experimented with tons of different kinds of kitty litters. Most of them are clay based and from expensive to cheap, you really are gonna use the same thing. They've all got scent to them or scent deodorizers and certain chemicals that are put into kitty litter actually pull methane out of the air, which is quite interesting. But to acquire a five gallon pail of kitty litter is going to run you about 19, 20 dollars at a minimum on the cheap side. Now how much weight you're going to get in that five gallon container is about 35 to 40 pounds of mass. So you've got 35 to 40 pounds. This is nice and steamy warm here. So we'll take some temps on this. So we are sitting at 98. This has 98 degrees on the kitty litter here. And we are sitting 123 on the same side. I rotated both of these consistently to basically cook them the same amount and allow them to heat up about the same here. So I did a little experimenting the other day with a whole lot of variables and I tried to do the exact same experimenting to both of the same amounts by weight of kitty litter to sand. So I've done a bunch of experimenting. I have data for everybody. I just wanted to share this because this requires a lot less energy and it heats up a lot faster with the amount of energy you're giving it. And this one heats up a little bit slower and it holds a lot more energy. It has a lot more thermal capacity or heat capacity to it. So that aside, we have a $20 five gallon pail of kitty litter. Now, funny story is that I picked up a couple five gallon buckets of sand. I went to my local cement mixing yard and they had just tons and tons of sand laying around. I talked to the actual owner and got to explain what was going on and what I needed it for. And I really needed a truck load but I brought the five gallon buckets to see if they would charge per bucket and he gave me three and a half five gallon buckets for free so I acquired three and a half times the amount of what I paid for twenty dollars for this now I'm not saying that everybody can just go get free buckets of sand wherever but I did get kind of lucky with that and I also met the owner so I was able to basically line up the next deal to get a truckload of sand here's a little fun fact for sand there is about 3,000 pounds per one cubic yard of sand. So that is a lot, a lot of weight per cubic yard. So you're only fitting about a third of a yard into your truck or maybe a half of a yard in your truck bed because of weight and size and cubic size. That is about your max. So really to fill that up, he was going to charge me $20. So he was gonna charge me 10 bucks for one scoop and basically $20 just to fill my truck bed up. So on average, you're paying between 10 and $30 across the country for a truck bed full of sand. And that is a very, very cheap rate when you're comparing it to spending $20 for a five gallon container of this clay material. Just to get to near the same mass of sand as we have of clay kitty litter, we are going we have to spend and reach deep in our pockets to achieve that so that is almost out of the equation already for a large greenhouse so I really wanted to see if this was going to be worth it for me and it's not turning out like it's going to be anywhere near what I can do with sand what I can do with the price on kitty litter so I see some videos on heating with kitty litter and I wanted to see how feasible it was so sand does have a smaller and lower heat capacity and heat storage thermal storage than the clay does but sand is allowed to heat up a lot faster because of the lower specific heat of it so in my research 
research, I found experiments where people were leaving sand, uh, one kilo or 2.2 pounds of sand in a room, and like a 60 degree room, basically our 60 degree greenhouse, and they found that five and a half hours was the time that it took to come down. So I did my own experiment, one kilo of sand, one kilo, so 2.2 pounds and 2.2 pounds, and I found that it was about five and a half hours. So breaking that down, that releases about seven and a half to eight Fahrenheit degrees off of that sand per hour or so. Just a rough estimate, but it's about seven to eight degrees. I can feel it slowly releasing and thermally releasing this energy. So we performed the experiment ourselves with one kilo of sand and one kilo of kitty litter. So this is not exactly a kilo. These are just full to the top. I actually weighed them out and did experiments the other day and took the data down. So this sand stayed hot for about five hours and 15 minutes and that relates to about seven and a half to eight degrees fahrenheit thermally released off of the sand per hour so that's not too bad and that's five five and a half hours almost of heat that you put in and then at nighttime you're going to have five and a half hours of thermal storage or thermal release at nighttime now we found that it was about seven to eight hours about seven and a half hours that it took this clay to actually dissipate the heat. So it was significantly more time, but it didn't release it as strongly. It, so it wasn't heating up as much, but it was holding that thermal mass in the clay long. So clay is a better heat storage medium, not by a whole lot, but it is a better heat storage medium. For the seven and a half to eight hours that it took this to dissipate all of the heat, it was rated about five, five and a half degrees Fahrenheit released off of this per hour. But like water, clay requires more energy to get it hot as opposed to sand. Sand really picks up the heat and it holds it like a battery and then it re-releases it after the heat source is gone. Now I mentioned specific heat and specific heat just refers to the amount of energy it requires to heat one gram of material by one degree Celsius. So that aside, let's discuss the specific heat of each of these. Starting with sandy clay, it requires 0.33 calories to raise one gram of it by one degree Celsius. So a quartzite rocky type sand is going to require 0.19 of a calorie to raise one gram by one degree Celsius. Now water requires one whole whopping calorie to raise one gram by one degree Celsius, which is a lot but it holds a lot more. It has a higher specific heat. Now relating those numbers to joules per kilogram, that sandy clay is going to require about 1,381 joules to heat up one kilogram by one degree Celsius. Your quartzite sand is going to require about 795 joules per kilogram to heat it up one degree Celsius. And your water coming in at about 4,186 joules per kilogram to heat it up one degree Celsius. And that is a ton of energy when you compare it to these two right here. So as you're seeing, both of these are having similar specific heats compared to water. So if you're using either of these and you're going to spend a ton on one as opposed to the other, I would choose the cheaper one when their specific heats aren't that far apart compared to the best thermal mass we have. Now sand has the great ability to be able to be dried and it's rock. It's not going to melt, it's not going to succumb to structural breakage or breakdown or clumping with water. I mean, it'll be dried out. Now if I get my kitty litter wet, it is pretty well done for. It's never coming out of here. It will just be like a clay tube, I'm pretty sure. I've had it happen in our container before, so that's what I'm assuming. It's all clumping once it's moist and it gets that moisture in the air. We're inside a greenhouse, so if you use a whole brand new container, it's probably not going to be usable after you use it for that, and that can be quite expensive to start heating with a thermal mass of using kitty litter. So we're definitely not going to be using kitty litter for a thermal mass in our greenhouse. There is no reason reason to buy all of that kitty litter when you could go get some cheap sand. You could get even 50 pound bags of sand at the play sand at the store for probably about five to seven dollars a bag. So you're already getting much more poundage, about 10 to 15 pounds more in a bag of sand than you're going to get in a bucket of kitty litter or a big bag of kitty litter. So per poundage per dollar, you're 
definitely going to want to use sand in your greenhouse as a thermal bat. I hope everybody really enjoyed this and I've seen some videos where they're using kitty litter and I don't know if it's just clickbait or a gimmick but it does hold some thermal mass but why would you spend so much money to have a thermal mass when it's not as long term. You can use different kinds of kitty litters that are just little flakes of clay and stuff like that. You could pack them down together and make bricks out of them, I guess. But man, I would just be using this sand because we can fill up all types of structures. We've got a bunch of experiments coming. We've got two or three experiments where we're going to be heating sand with solar power and we'll be bringing all the data from all of those sand heating experiments also where it's just renewable energy. We're not using chemicals or anything like that for reactions. We're just basically using solar power and passive energy and whatever energy we can create for basically free. So I'd like to thank all the new subscribers we've gotten recently. It is very nice to see everybody on board and there is a ton of awesome comments coming. You guys are very knowledgeable about everything and you've got great questions. I really appreciate everybody with the great comments and all of the great positive feedback. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video and until next time.